you should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no. Wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster, and then you should learn how to control it. Do you know the expression, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war? Right, right, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly right. And so when I tell young men that, they think, well, lots of them are competitive. They're low in agreeableness, you know, because that's part of being competitive temperamentally. It's like, is there something wrong with being competitive? There's nothing wrong with it. There's something wrong with cheating. There's something wrong with being a tyrant. There's something wrong with winning unfairly. All of those things are bad, but you don't want people to win? What's the difference between trying to win and striving? You want to eradicate striving? Well, it's the uncomfortable feeling that people associate with losing. When they've personally experienced it, they look at losing as they're, they've been oppressed or they've been hurt. But what they don't understand is that is the motivation for growth. And one of the most beautiful things that I think a young person can get involved in is martial arts. Because martial arts teach you that in a way that very few things do. They teach you it in especially jujitsu, because jujitsu is so complex and there's so many possibilities to it that it attracts a lot of really smart people. If you think of jujitsu, you would think of like brutish individuals engaging in this hard martial art. If you go to a real good jujitsu school, you see nerds. Mm -hmm. You see a bunch of like really smart kids that really get obsessed with the possibilities of this physical language. This physical language also teaches you the consequences of not working hard, of not being prepared, of not understanding positions, of not doing due diligence mm -hmm. and doing the work. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an, an, amazing, uh, f an amazing scaffolding for developing your life. Well, it I also teaches you how to lose. Yes. You know, and, that's and very important. One definition of a winner is someone who never let losing stop them. Yes. You know, and, and the idea that a single loss in a competition is somehow a defeat is completely insane. First of all, well, let's say you're a hockey player and you're a good player and you, and you lose the tournament. It's like, well, so what? You played the game. You're increasing your skills. It's like there's always next time. And one of the things that I've also been telling people, informing people about, is the idea that life isn't a game. It's a series of games. And the right ethic is to be the winner of the series of games. And part of that means you, well, you have to learn how to be a good loser because yes. you're not going to win every single game. But you also have to embrace those losses as learning experiences. And the people that have never lost are afraid of losing. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of learning. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of that feeling. That terrible feeling that you get from losing is so beneficial. It's aided me in so many ways. Like It's one of the reasons, and also one of the reasons why I talk so openly about bombing on stage. And I, t I do it with other comedians. Mm -hmm. I, I always want to tell people, yeah, I'm an established comedian. I've been a comedian for a long time. Let me tell you about like when I was two years in or five years in or, or four years ago. Like, let me tell you about some horrible moments on stage where it went wrong. Just so you understand, like those things took me to another place because yep. I realized I don't want to ever feel that feeling again. And so I ramped yeah. everything up and then I went back to work and I went over my notebooks and I went over my, my recordings and I figured out what I was doing wrong and, and I tried to improve upon it. But if, if it wasn't for that horrible, sick feeling, that's the same feeling you get when you get tapped out in jujitsu class. Same feeling you get when you lose a martial arts tournament or anything else. Losing is important. Well, you might also say, like, let's say that you could pick your you can pick your level of competition in life to some degree. Okay, so let's say you pick a level of competition where you're always winning. It's like, well, all that means is you've picked the wrong level of competition. Yes. Because, you know, like, let's say you're a grandmaster chess player and you're, all you do is play amateurs. And every night you go home and congratulate yourself on what a genius you are because you just stomp these people left, right, and center. It's like, you're not a genius. You're dimwit. Right. What you should be doing is playing people who are beating you like, well, as much as you can tolerate. Right. So maybe that's 40% of the time. Maybe it's 60% of the time. But that way, because to be a winner, you want to be disciplined. You want to know what you're doing. And then you want to be on the edge where your skills are being developed. And if you're going to be on the edge where your skills are going to be developed, you're, you're at a place where, where loss, where losing is always a possibility. Because otherwise you're not pushing yourself beyond your current capacity. And so one of the things that I've outlined in 12 Rules for Life is, is a theory of meaning. 
Because meaning, as far as I'm concerned, the sense of meaningful engagement is the antidote to malevolence and suffering, essentially. Because you want to have a life that's so engaging that you think, despite the fact that I'm limited and that we're mortal and that life is tragedy and there's evil in the world, despite all that, this is worth doing. And I think that, that there's, there's, a, there's a technical meaning that, that, that genuinely exists, and that's the meaning that you get when you're in a domain where you have some discipline and some skill, so you're laying out your competence and, and your, your ability, but you're simultaneously pushing yourself to develop past where you are. That's really engrossing. And what's that do, what that is doing is expanding your competence. And so life is suffering and betrayal in, in, in many senses of the word. But you can adopt a way of traversing through life that is more powerful than the tragedy and the malevolence. I agree. And I, I say to many people that what, what is going on in your life is you have a series of human reward systems that are in your body, encoded in your body, in your genetics, and it's the reason why human beings survived to 2018. And in order to be happy, you have to feed those things. You have to feed all of them. You have to feed the one that wants to uh, d overcome difficult tasks. You have to feed the one that wants to solve problems. You have to feed the one that wants to be uh, with a, a loving tribe of, of people that you care about. You have to feed the one that wants to procreate. You have to feed all of these things. You have to feed the love. You have to feed the competition. You have to feed the discipline. And that, to me, is the only way to stay balanced. Or mm -hmm. with me, with my mm -hmm. body and my mind, that's the only way I've been able to stay balanced. And when either any of those things get out of whack, I get out of whack. Yeah, 